What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 87. It's going to get a sip of my little handy water canteen here. Iron Infidel, it's called. I don't know. It's on, on Amazon. You have your mag pouch here, container for some extra little drinks here. Got some Trulene stuff in here, some Herbalife stuff in here. Stay hydrated. Anyway, Steve Says, episode number 87. Let me tell you, we're going to talk about something pretty serious today. Something that is one of the biggest mistakes that I, I probably have made over the last, or, or the first, I don't know, 35, 40 freaking years of my life and still trying to improve on it and learn from it and grow with it. And we're going to go deep into detail what that is, how you can avoid this same mistake. But before we get to that, you know that Steve's, and I have you on several screens here, somebody checking out if you have any comments, questions, put them down below. You know, Steve says, is is always about maybe not what you want to hear, but it's always going to be what you need to hear because some people will hate, but most can relate to the things that we're going to talk about and the trajectory that we go on with this show. But you know, we are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. This week, we're going to be talking about what mistakes and lessons have you learned And that can help you now today. So put those down in the comments also. Send me a message on that. I want to hear about it. What are some mistakes you've learned over the years? And it took you a long time to get through your thick fucking stubborn head to realize something that was holding you back as a massive roadblock as what we're going to talk about here today. And then I want to know, I want want to ask you, do you do do regular self-evaluations? I call it a fraud audit. I give myself a fraud audit. Things that I either believe or talk about Am I actually living that way, implementing it? So I want to ask you, do regular self-evaluations or give yourself a fraud audit? Or are you operating as a fucking fraud? And and, and in a way, what, what what we're talking about today, I wouldn't say I was operating as a fraud, but it's something that was lacking in my life completely, completely didn't exist. And then, and then once you discover these mistakes, what do you do about it? Do you do anything about it to improve it, to make it better, to, to get to that next level? All that's going to be today. Steve says, episode number 87. Steve says, as always, is a live show on how to have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles preventing your success in your health, your family, your your fitness, your relationships, your finances, so that you can get your shit together, stop being a little bitch, and live life on your own freaking terms. And this one is going to be a huge one when it comes to that. Because you know we're always talking about the mind, the body, your business, having a role model mindset, how to operate with decaf. I talk about decaf all the time. We're going to talk about it again a little later today. Decaf is discipline, energy, confidence, taking action and attacking, and then of course being a freak, being your freak self, true to yourself, who you are, what you stand for. It's a peak freak perspective on personal development, a positive mindset, and of course, always a touch of health and fitness because that is your foundation. So here, episode 87. One of the biggest mistakes, and we're going to get right to it right off the bat. No, no, no trickery or waiting. Like last week, I think it took to like 23 minutes to get to what the, the word was that we were talking about, the P word that we were talking about last week, which was patience. But we're going to jump right into it this week because there's a lot to talk about about it, a lot of mistakes I made when it came to it, and what we're talking about is a mistake I made literally my entire life, I guess it's because of maybe the way I was a kid or the way I was brought up, fucked up childhood, whatever you want to call it, is I I failed to create relationships with humans, avoided relationships, avoided personal, social relationships in general. Like just with, whether it's in the business world, personally, professionally, I just avoided relationships, avoided a lot of humans and human interaction, probably because when I was a kid, literally I grew up like a a little ghost in the house. I've said, I've talked about before how my my best friend was the wall, the side of a house that I would play a nine inning game of baseball against, just throwing the ball against it for hours. So that's what this is all about. This is about Connect. One of my words for the year, I put. I have a couple of words that are guiding the year. First of all, the, the theme of the year was shut up. Of course, this is all guided by discipline, but the theme of the year was shut up. But then a few words of the year for me were create, 
and connect to create more, create more content, create more videos like this, create more information, whether it's emails, but then also connect, make more connections, connect to myself more, connect to other people more, connect to strangers more, connect to the people I already know, connect to them even more. And that's in relationships. And the mistake that I made for so many fucking years was avoiding those types of relationships, friendships, whatever the hell you want to call it. And let me, let me tell you, like, and this is not, this is not just when I was a kid. This is like literally just up to a couple of years ago. Like, let's say I'm in Las Vegas at an elevator and I'm waiting for the elevator to come and there's no one standing there waiting with me. Then someone comes over and is standing waiting for that same elevator. There's times, and it, it would only be certain times, I guess, whatever kind of fucked up mood I was in at the time. There's times I would maybe pretend I'm on my phone or something or walk away and go do something else rather than get on the elevator just because I didn't want to be there with that person. And it's a complete stranger. But I want to just avoid that. It's fucking weird. But listen, we're weird. We're freaks. And that's what this is all about. Breaking through these barriers. Breaking through the bullshit that's holding you back in your fucking life. That's probably been with you since you were a kid. So you could put on your big boy pants and, and grow the fuck up. So... Literally, I, I would I would go, not want to get in the elevator with these people. Like, then to, the thought of like, say going to someone's wedding, going to a wedding would be like the biggest, most disgusting idea of something for me to do back then and probably still a little now. Like, you're sitting at a table with a bunch of freaking strangers. They're trying to make this small talk, this conversation with you. And they're like, oh, whose side you're on, who this and that. And I'm just thinking like, shut the fuck up. I want to go home. Leave me alone. And... Any room you or you enter, you start thinking about, all right, if, if shit went to hell, what order would I have to kill these people in? Like, that's the thoughts, uh, that's the thoughts that come to my mind when I would think of having to go to a wedding. Like, that's how serious it is. That's how fucked up it is. And this is in the past. This isn't so much now. Of course, it's a, a work in freaking progress, of course. And listen, I missed out on a lot of parties. I missed out on a lot of building uh, connections and relationships. I missed out on a lot of business opportunities. The, 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 my failure to create relationships with people, I'm sure has cost me in the business world, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not into the millions at this, at at that, this point, after going through so many years and decades, just trying to be the loner, be the lone wolf, do shit my own way. Like it was so fucking crazy. Like I ran a business just winging it for like, I don't even know, seven, eight, nine, ten years in an actual physical location, like never ran a promotion or a sale or did any marketing because that would require interaction with people. We literally just went and, and ran the business and hoped that people came and it did, but it only could get you to a certain level. Then I needed to hire a coach because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing once the business started growing, but that would require more human interaction. So I, I put off hiring a coach and a mentor for years when it could have helped accelerate the growth of the business and literally made millions of dollars way ahead of time. But whatever, things work out the way they do. Lessons learned, they make you who you are, they build your character, they forge you into the fucking beast that you are. So you take that stuff and, and use it to make you stronger, not sit and bitch about it. So so what? Lost out a few hundred thousand dollars, lost out a couple million dollars. What are you gonna do? You fucking learn from it, you move on and, and you make 10 times that in the future. But I'm sure I've missed out on on tons of awesome connections and, and business opportunities by avoiding human relationships. And I don't remember where I saw it, but someone talked about human relationships as minimal friction and maximum cooperation. That's like what human relationships should be, what connection should be, minimal friction and maximum cooperation. And so you need to, I want to, we're going to get into your circle and your inner circle, the kind of people you're around, if you're around a bunch of fucked up people or not. But one way to, kind of hold up a mirror to the people you're around and the relationships you're in. Whether, listen, whether it's relationship with your, your spouse, your partner, your fucking goat or whatever it is, put it up against those two things. Minimal friction, maximum cooperation. Where does it rate in those two? And that'll, that'll tell you a lot of things about if you're in the right place, if you're around the right type of people, if you have the right types of business partners or teammates, whatever it is, because these are all relationships right? So connect. Connecting was one of my words for the year. Create, connect. Connecting. First, before you can connect with anyone else, you need to fucking connect with yourself first. 
Once you connect with yourself, then you can connect with your family. Then you can connect with your team. Then you can connect with coaches and mentors, which, which I mentioned I just waited way too long for. And it showed me the value of a coach and mentor, which is why I do coaching and mentoring like every one of my businesses in some way or another. It's really just me being a coach. Back to the, the old personal trainer days, just on a much higher level and, and, and bigger, grander scale. And, and, and then once you can connect to your team, to coaches, to mentors, then you can connect with prospects in your company. You can, you can connect with your clients. Then you connect with fucking strangers. Then you can connect with anyone and everyone that you come across in your path as you start building these skills and learning these skills. And then you could start even branching out and, and using your connecting ability as a force multiplier, networking out around the place. Now, let me tell you something. This is, I'm, I'm still a work in progress. Trust me, I'm a fucking work in progress when it comes to connecting with humans. I don't, I, I have, I wasn't brought up with the best social skills, if you can't tell. Not too many, too many friends or whatever in the past. So even now, I'll have, you'll, you'll have flashbacks of it. And it's just fucked up. It's in your DNA. It's just who you are. It's part of your personality, the way that you're molded, the way you're born, the way you're molded. But it's a work in progress. And let me tell you, I put fucking years of work into this, dedicated work into this, focusing on leadership and communication and sales and marketing and emotional intelligence to help to learn how to build better human relationships. Like half these books, that's what it's on, that I've read all multiple times or listened to multiple times. And let me tell you, as as I'm working harder and harder to get better at this stuff, it still wasn't great, even just a couple of years ago. I was on a hike walking with one of the instructors from the project, Aaron. It was when I, one of the first times I met him. We were going to do a workout together. We were going to go on a hike and then do some, some kickboxing training together out in the park. And we're on the hike. And this was actually before, I believe this was before we ever even, this was before even the first project class. So this is now oh, damn, about two years ago. We're walking on this hike. And everyone we're passing on this hike, you know, Aaron is saying, how you doing? What's up? Good morning. Awesome day. How's it going? Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Every single person he passes. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? Does he have like some, some like, some greeting Tourette syndrome or something? Some Tourette syndrome where he just has to have greetings to everyone he meets? Because if I'm on a hike, if someone happened to be within like touching distance and makes eye contact, and it looks like a friendly-ish eye contact, then I might give them a nod, or a hey, or something like that. And I'm watching Aaron, he's every single person, I'm talking about fucking a dude way over there, or a girl way over there, walking, headphones on, looking at the ground, he's still saying it to her. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? He's got he's got some kind of nice guy Tourette syndrome, or something, or some social Tourette syndrome. But it was a lesson learned, I'm like, wow, I'm really on the fucking far end of that spectrum. So, I started working on that even more and more. And up to that point, I already had worked on it for years, but I realized how much more work I had to do. We are a work in progress. We are imperfect fucking beasts is what we are. So I'm realizing that and I'm working on it, working on it. And this is a couple years ago. And let me tell you, I start getting a little better at it. We start going on hikes. Of course, you start, start teaching this to people. So I have to become better at it and continue towards mastery of it myself. And I'm going on hikes and I'm being the, the, the Tourette's guy. Not, I'm not really a good morning kind of person. I'll say, hey, what's up? How you doing? Whatever. Fist bump or something like that. Just a little bit different than good morning, lovely day or any of that shit. It's just whatever. My own way of the Aaron, the Aaron social Tourette's that he had. And, and I became a long way with it. And then let me fucking tell you something. As I'm starting to turn the corner and really make some progress in this area. The fucking corona happens. The fucking corona happens. I'm out on a bike trail. This is just lat, whatever, March, April, right when the corona's starting. And I'm, and I think me and the freak family were going for a walk or something out on the bike trail, out on the Santa Ana River bike trail where we do our bike rides. We're going for a walk. And there's a, a, a couple walking towards us in the other direction. Of course, they got their masks on, their face diapers all covering. Oh, you see some eyes. I thought they were going to fucking rob me. I put my hands up and was handing them my wallet. But it turns out they were just going for a fucking walk outside in the grand open outdoors. But whatever. Total different topic right there. So they're coming towards us. They're close. It's a pretty close trail, pretty narrow distance. So I'm like, hey, what's going on? How you doing? These motherfuckers 
turn their head away, look down at the ground, and blade their bodies away and start walking by like I'm the fucking patient zero of the corona. I'm like, motherfucker, this is like some, some sick joke from God. Like, I'm finally making some progress in dealing with humans, and now they're fucking shunning me. They're turning away from me. And do- I'm finally reaching out, having the hello Tourette's, and they are turning away from me. I'm like, this is the shit. See, I must have been ahead of the game by avoiding people and avoiding human contact, not talking to anyone, making eye contact. These people wouldn't even make eye contact with me. Like, motherfucker, you can't get corona from eye contact, okay? You can't get fucking corona from looking at someone, from saying a word, from from across across the way. It just can't happen. So corona really pushed my progress back, back to the stone ages of, like, now people do the, the air high fives and all this other shit, right? And they don't hug anymore. Hardly handshake. I'm a fist bumper. I'll give a handshake. Now I go to handshake people and they look at me like I'm fucking nuts. Like I have the cooties. Like what the fuck? And but now I don't have to hug anyone. So that's perfect. Because if you know, I'm not a hugger. One time I was going to do in the, in the, in the gym, I was going to do a contest, a challenge that the, it was going to be a hugging challenge. I was going to have to hug the winner, but that never happened. Fuck that. That didn't happen. Especially now with Corona, we wouldn't want to get that. We got to stay seven feet away or whatever it is, whatever the dumb rules are. So one of the, one of the goals I made last year and, and I failed at it miserably was to meet a new person every day. Fail miserably because Corona made all the fucking people look at, look the other way and look down the ground. Afraid of fucking patient zero over here when I can't even, I'm fucking immune to the shit. They shouldn't have worried about it because I'm fucking immune to it. But they're looking away from me. I'm like, holy shit, this is like a sick joke. This is like payback from all the years of me ignoring the world and being a ghost to the world. This is fucking payback. Now I'm getting turned away as I'm trying to be Mr. Social fucking Butterfly. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, and then I would look at someone like Tyson, a little nine-year-old little freak. And th- this is back when he was like six, seven. I would take him to some events with me and he would go up to adults, shake their hand, look them in the eye, firm handshake, introduce himself, ask them where they're from, ask them what they do for a living, things like that. I'm like, damn, I need to step up my game. This kid took the bits and pieces he sees me doing and he fucking 10x that shit, 100x that shit. So he he, he, he takes the good stuff, disregards the bad stuff, but now making me look bad again. Shit, I got to step up my game even again. Now this little shit is, 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 having the Tourette's, the handshake Tourette's, the how you doing Tourette's. So it's time to step up the game. But but I mean, I'm halfway joking about this stuff, but not really. This all really happened. But it's, I've been working on it for years and it's always going to be a work in progress. And I'll, and like anything else, I'll have my moments, but I don't want to be around fucking people. Like, leave me alone. I just want to hang out, want to be by myself, hang out at home, go work out by myself, do whatever. You need your alone time too. Make, make no mistake about it. You need your alone time where you're just complete by yourself in your own thoughts your own time, whether it's driving, biking, running, walking, hiking, you need your alone time to clear your freaking head. You need to do it. Anthony Del Regno, what's up, freak? The American hero of the American Legion out in New York. What's going on? So, yes, Corona fucking derailed my progress. And nowadays, it's it's I've come up with a, a formula even for creating these relationships. And it's I call it GCA. You need to generate, cultivate, and accelerate. And that, that's not just for relationships. That's for a lot of things in life. That's for your energy. That's for your motivation. I use this formula for lots of things. Think about it. You generate it. Basically, you're planting the seeds. You're planting it. Then cultivate it. You're feeding it, feeding it, pouring into it so that it can grow, which is accelerate. So generate, cultivate, accelerate, which is basically plant, feed, and grow. And that's what it takes to build these relationships. That's what I've learned. And that's what has led me to basically living, end up moving to California, living in California and tons of different opportunities, both personally, professionally, opportunity, just, it leads to so much more. So many more opportunities, the more that you're able to generate and cultivate and accelerate the relationships around you, but it takes a freaking conscious effort. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about your relationships. Who are you hanging around? Who's around? First, there's there's two things. There's your inner circle. Now, let me tell you something about your inner circle. In general, your inner circle is only going to get you to an average, ordinary place. 
your inner circle, and I'm not talking about your spouse or whatever. I'm talking about your inner circle, like your friends, your coworkers, your just regular friends, your coworkers. That's your inner circle. Those people are don't, don't, don't get the level that you're on. They don't understand where you're trying to go. So they're not going to push you. They're not going to pressure you. They're going to want you to go and sit and watch Netflix, go out to the bar and get fucking trashed or whatever, rather than working on your personal development, get, making more money, getting better in certain areas, learning new skills. Your inner circle is going to hold you back for the most part. You need, in addition to your inner circle, you need your outside team. You need your outside team in addition to that inner circle. The outside team is out of your family, out of your industry. People who are going to level you up so that you're not stuck in that, in that flat line, that plateau. You need people around you who are going to fucking fire you up, motivate you, inspire you so you can start then generating that motivation yourself. You need to be around people who expect more out of you. Your friends don't expect shit out of you. They expect you to go get fucking wasted and maybe puke on the side of the road later on tonight. That's what your friends expect of you. That's your inner circle expects of you. Now, you need to be around people who are going to push you and fucking pressure you to keep you moving forward. You need to be around people who are just as successful as you or even more successful than you. And then you need to spend as much time with those freaks and consistently talk with them and meet with them and schedule uh, schedule meetings and events with them. Spend time with them to pick their brain, to talk about higher level things, to plan higher level things, to strategize, brainstorm, come up with ideas, but also just also on the, on the flip side, also just have some fun with them. Also connect with them that way, just with not always so serious because it doesn't need to always be so serious. So ask yourself, you, you know the saying, you're... you're uh, you're a combination of the, the top five people that you spend your time with. And that's true pretty much to an extent. But I want to ask you, do you have five fucking people in your life that are more successful than you? Maybe make more money than you, in better shape than you, smarter than you, happier than you. Maybe have some things you want or have some skills that you would like to attain. Are you around those kind of people? And then how much time are you spending around those people? And then... Those people that you are making or attempting to make these connections with, what do they actually even know about you? Do they know your, your history, your past? Do they know your fucking goals? Do they know what you're looking to do? Do they know what your, the, your, the details of where you're looking ahead? What do they know about you? Because then you're not connected with them. You need to connect both transmitting and receiving. Connecting is goes boom. It's going transmitting and receiving. That's what a connection is. It's not just going flowing of information or motivation or fucking energy one way. Connections need to feed off of each other. That's the way the human interactions need to be. Then on the flip side, you need to flip that shit and ask yourself, the people you're around, are you contributing to that group? Are you contributing to their development? You keep working on your personal development, right? Let's say you're, you're here, you're, blah, blah, blah. even your spouse, your, your, your goat, your spouse, whatever it is, your partner, your friends, you start developing. And let me tell you, if you're here and, you're, and your friend, partner, spouse, whatever is here, and you start working on your personal development, you're going up a notch, up a notch, up a notch, up a notch, and they're here. There's a growth gap. I call it the growth gap. Once you grow to a certain level and they're not growing with you, there's a growth gap that you're not going to be able to make up. So what you need to do is take them along for the ride. Try to bring them along for the ride with you. Or else you're not going to be able to stand that motherfucker. You won't even be able to understand. You won't be speaking the same language. You'll be speaking total different fucking languages than each other. And you'll start to have resentment. And and, and this could go for your, your spouse. This could go for your friends. This could go for your employees. This can go for your business partners. This is all across the board. All interactions. All interpersonal. All human relationships. Like if you are leveling up and not bringing along those people that you need to go, need to be a part of that equation, if you're not bringing them along for the ride, you're fucking doomed. Let me tell you that. You are doomed. You need to not just try to look down upon them and tell them you need to do this and this and this. You need to do it with them. Interact with them. That's what interaction is, right? Transmitting and receiving. You need to do that shit with them. Bring them along for the ride. Otherwise, it's just you, all high and mighty, douchebag, just barking down, telling them, oh, go read this book, go take this course, go watch this video, this rah-rah video. No, you need to do it together, learn it together, develop those skills together. That's what cultivating is. That's pouring into it. 
That happens together. It has to be generated. And then it needs to be accelerated. Generate, cultivate, accelerate. It needs to be done together. Otherwise, there'll be too big of a growth gap that you're just going to be fucked. And you will, not be around, uh, you will not be able to be around that person. It might be an employee. Listen, I, I, I've... I've and, and, and let me tell you something. If you truly, genuinely try to pour into someone, or whether it's... And listen, whether it's, it's a partner, a spouse, an employee, and they're not willing to do it, and you've done your due diligence with the right approach, and they're just resistant to it, they're having high resistance to it, you need to part ways. You need to get rid of that. You need to get out of that situation. You need to get out of that situation. Remember, minimal friction, maximum cooperation. If there is friction to what you're presenting as as in, let's elevate, let's move up, let's get better, and someone doesn't want to do it, fuck, I've had employees. I have I have per- private coaching clients right now that pay a couple thousand dollars a month for one-on-one coaching with me. I've had employees in the past where I would give them the same type of coaching. The same type of coaching that people are paying thousands of dollars a month for. Or the the same type of coaching that men get in the project. I've had employees in the past where I would give that to them on a regular basis. That type of coaching, guidance, and mentoring, and leadership. And if there's a resistance to it, if if they're not repelling it, you need to fucking cut the losses and realize that that person is not coming along on a personal development ride with you. If you continue to develop yourself and not bring them along for the ride, that growth gap will not ever be made up and you will become resentful. You will begin to fucking hate that person. You won't be able to be around them. You want nothing to do with them. They need to disappear from your existence. That's what you need to think about it. You need to close that growth gap. Take them along for the ride with you. And that that's the only way that those Anyone could be part of your outside team. You can, that's the only way to take your inner circle and, and kind of have them as actually be considered your outside team is if you take them along for the ride and that personal development ride with you. And this all goes into, again, starting with you. You can't connect with these other people. You can't develop them until you fucking connect and develop with yourself. Finding out, asking yourself, who the fuck are you? Who do you want to be? What type of person do you want to be? What type of person are you trying to become? What are you looking to become in the future? What are your goals? And if the people that you think you're connecting with and build relationships with don't know this stuff, that's your fucking fault. That is your fault. You haven't been connecting with them. And then you could st- you could start making other connections once you connect with yourself. And and rate yourself on this stuff. Rate yourself on this stuff. Give it, like how well do, do the people that you claim you have these personal relationships and connects with? How well do they actually know you? Rate them all on your top five closest people. Rate them on a scale of one to 10. How well do they actually know you? How well do they know what your goals are, your dreams are, what you're working towards, what your life is going to look like in the future? Do they know that shit? Then if not, why are they even part of your outside team? They're just your inner circle. Yes, men, bitches. That's all they are. And you need to know who you are, what you stand for. For As I already mentioned, you know mine is discipline and energy and confidence and attack and freak. So until you know what you stand for, how can you you connect with other people? They need to know who they're connecting with. Otherwise, again, it's fraudulent. You need to do that fraud audit. Give yourself a fraud audit. Then you, then you could start connecting with these other people, building these relationships with other people. And when you are doing that, you have to think, all right, how... What, how do I want to connect with these people? How do I want to interact with these people? Who do I want to be? Who do I want, what do I want to bring to the table? What do I want to bring to this situation? How am I going to raise the energy and the enthusiasm and the, the skill level of this group, of this team, whatever it is, whatever you're talking about, of this relationship? And you, and you could be talking about a team, a group, a business partner, a spouse, whatever the fuck it is. And then each individual, how are you going to treat, how, you, how do you want to approach and treat and what type of interactions you're going to have with them? Like what, what do you want the world to, what is a stamp you want to put on the, on the, on each interaction you have with each person when you meet them? And until you have all that out of the way, until you take them along for the ride with you, until then, can you really start having more massive influence out there? And for me, influence starts with emulation. It's teaching people how to think through your fucking actions. That's what influence really is to me. Teach people how to think 
with your actions. And you can't do that stuff if you first don't already connect with yourself. Start building those, generating those relationships to connecting and cultivating them. So that's how you accelerate them. You accelerate them with influence. Teaching how to peop- people how to think with your actions. Like, what do I want people to think or feel when I'm around? I want them to feel like they're fucking disciplined. I want them to feel motherfucking energy, like infectious energy. I want them to feel confident that they can run through a brick wall, they can figure anything out, that they have the solution to any problems. I want them to feel so confident that there's no such thing as a problem. There's only situations that need someone like them to get their hands on it, to wrap their fucking minds around it. I want someone who takes action, is just in attack mode. That's I want someone to feel when they're around me, that they're ready to attack. Ready to take action, ready to jump up and make it happen without fear. Attack with freaking courage, without worried about what's going on. That's what I want them around. So they could be them freak selves and not conform to what the rest of the world wants them to be. Because you can't have a real connection. You can't have a connection with, with a business partner, with a, with a spouse, with a, a, an employee. If you're just bullshitting, if you're full of shit, if you're not your freak self, like that's the only way to make it happen. Again, the fraud audit. Are you living according to the values that you want and according to what you want to put the stamp you want to put on the world? Are you living that way? Or are you just living how you think this interaction should be? Fuck that. It's going to be built on a fraudulent activity, whether it's a business, a relationship, whatever it is. That's why you need to think about it. Getting other people to, how to, getting other people to think a certain way because of your actions. That's emulation. That's influence. That's the ultimate like next level of relationship building is building influence through emulation. That's what it is. Emulation was one of my other words of the year. Emulation. Connect. Create. And of course, the theme was shut the fuck up. And then, once you start building this, in the, these relationships, cultivating these relationships, generating these relationships, and, and accelerating them through your influence and through your emulation, now it's time to really take it to the next level and see what can you contribute. Start challenging motherfuckers. That's how you really push a relationship. Start challenging them. You want to bring them along for the ride with you and you're moving at this accelerated because you're accelerating the relationship. You want to bring them along for the ride? Challenge a motherfucker. Challenge them with the way they're living. Challenge them according to your standards and expectations and your core values. Challenge them how they're living their life, how they're operating. Challenge them on their discipline. Challenge them on their energy levels. Challenge them on their self-talk and their confidence they have. Challenge them on the the amount of action that they're taking in a day. Challenge them on actually being who the fuck they are. Challenge them. That's the next, that's the next strongest level of relationship building to challenge them. Like you've earned the right to challenge them, to push them, to pressure them, to demand stuff of them, expect them, have high standards and expectations. That's what it is. Where you are challenging them to raise their energy levels. Raise their level of of contributing to the group. Challenge them. This is what we do in the project all the time. Both in the course itself and then after graduation. Constantly challenging all the graduates. To live up to the standards. To earn the title of a modern day knight every fucking day. Same thing in the Marines. You have to earn the title of Marine every day. And you're going to get challenged by that. By your brothers. You need to challenge them to, to... to reach their goals. Challenge them by holding them accountable. Challenge their effort. Challenge their attitude. Challenge their standards and expectations. Challenge their agreements that they made with you or other people. Challenge them to step the fuck up. Step up their game. Quit bullshitting. Quit playing small. Quit thinking little. This is real deep level of relationship building. When you are at that level to challenge a motherfucker like that. To rise, help them rise up with you because you are not stopping. You're not fucking stopping. And either you challenge them to rise up with you and you take them along for the ride with you or they're fucking gone. That's just the way it is. You need to challenge them to find out who the fuck they are. What are they capable of? Challenge them to be the newest, best version of themselves. That's what it takes. Challenge them to come out of their little comfort zones. Challenge them to have some fucking courage. Take some big fucking risks. Make some big bold moves to set deadlines and then crush those deadlines and push them to beat those deadlines, to reach their goals. Challenge them in their health and their fitness and nutrition. Challenge them in the decisions they're making. And I'm not saying in a confrontational way. And listen, sometimes it has to be in a confrontational way. But challenge them in a way as, I'm going here. 
I'm going to fucking challenge you to stay with me as I'm going here so we can do this shit together. That's what a challenge is when you're talking about relationship building and accelerating the relationship. That's accelerating the fucking relationship. It's not confrontational. Sometimes it might have to get you on the borderline of confrontational, borderline of fucking fist fight. But if that's what it takes to challenge them that you that to go along for the ride with you and listen, if they're resistant to that and you've done all your due diligence, they need to be fucking cut. They need to be fucking cut. And then the final stage of that is, as one of the one of the parts of the creed of the project is protect those who can't protect themselves. Think about that when it comes to relationship building. Protecting those who can't protect themselves. Having the fucking courage to stand up, to speak up for someone who can't stand up or can't speak up for themselves. How about that? That's ultimate relationship building. Think about that. Think of a a kid in in a schoolyard being bullied. And someone stands up to the bully, breaks his fucking nose. Break nose, answer questions later. Answer the questions to the principal later. Do what you got to do. Don't take that advice from me. That's relationship building. That's a bond right there that they're going to have. Protect those who can't protect themselves. Take, take care of someone who needs you right now. That's why if you're always on your fucking A game, you never have to get on your A game. Always be on your A game to always be able to help people. Always be able to protect someone. These are all the different levels of relationship building. So again, the, really the, the, the homework is look at your five closest people that you're next to. Break them on a scale of one to 10. How well do they know you? Are they elevating you? Are they where you want to be? Are they more successful than you? And then as you're, as you are elevating yourself, are they willing to come along for the ride with you? Are they willing to step up their fucking game with minimal friction and maximum cooperation? If not, you could try. You can keep nudging, but you can only fucking nudge so much before you fucking cut the, cut the ties and have to do what you got to do. Minimal friction, maximum cooperation. That is what you need to generate, to cultivate, and to accelerate the relationships. Push them, pressure them, challenge them. And listen, when you're going up and and you're developing yourself, you have to bring them along for the ride. Take them along for the ride or else you're doomed. It's a relationship that will be doomed no matter who it is. It could be, I've seen married couples for 20 years where one of them then starts getting on that personal development kick, starts developing themselves, and they don't bring the other person along for the ride. Then once they're there, they're at this high new level. They've learned so much after years of doing it. They're wondering, why are you thinking that way? Why do you want to watch fucking Netflix? Why are you a loser? I can't be around you. You fucking suck. It's their fault. Not developing them with them. Taking them along for the ride. Now let me tell you, this is the kind of stuff that we go over and we talk about and we drill in the project. Building relationships. The project really is building a lifelong brotherhood of men. Where we have connections for life, for years later. There's guys who graduated the first class of the project. There's guys who graduated the sixth class of the project. I saw two of them just meet each other in person for the first time just a few weeks ago. It was like they knew each other for life. That's relationships. That's building relationships. That's what the project is about. If you need help with any of this stuff and you think the project might be a good fit for you, send me a message. Let's talk about it. We'll jump on the phone. We'll do a quick interview call. See if the project is right for you. Or if you need a little more personalized attention, let me know. We could talk about possibly doing some one-on-one peak performance accountability coaching with you if you really need some immediate help in dealing with this stuff, in cultivating those relationships, having more discipline, having more energy, having more confidence, taking more fucking action, And living life on your own freaking terms. Being structured and having someone to hold you accountable. Who is holding you accountable? Is your group holding you accountable? It's all about building those relationships. A huge mistake I made and a work in progress I'm still working on. And I'm going to continue to work on it. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know how things are going. Let me know where you are struggling when it comes to to generating and cultivating these relationships. And building these relationships. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.